Um, this is a very good tool for presentations. It's it's not doesn't let you be as like creative or maybe like artistic as Photoshop. So I generally, when I'm making a presentation, I use the two in tandem with each other. So like I'll maybe make a background or something in Photoshop and then translate it over to InDesign. Um, Nick might tell you a little bit more about that though. Um, and so I was just gonna give a short little overview of, I guess, some a quick little crash course in you know some of the tools and stuff in in design, and then also sort of my uh, ideation that I go through when making a when making a presentation. Does that sound good, Smith? Yep. All right. Give us so a full guess, screen or PDF if you can. Minimize the stuff on the right. Yeah. Uh, can you see this? Is it full screen for you now? No. Okay. Take your mouse and just drag that thing over to the right where the arrow is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, whatever. It's all good. All right. Just make it happen. Is that better? Not really, but it's all good. Uh -oh. Let me minimize. I have so many tabs open, Jeff. I look like you. Okay. So, anyway, so I guess getting started. So, you, when you open InDesign, um, just for the totally uninitiated you always go to file to new document um and then it a black screen will pop up to let you choose your layout which is uh this part right here can you guys see my mouse yep okay so um right now i it's in picas which i have no idea what the hell that is but you can change it to inches pretty easily uh choose the dimension if you want it like vertical or horizontal so we're doing 11 by 17 horizontal yeah, uh, how many pages you want, um, the start number. If you want facing pages, so if it's like a book, like the pages face each other, like page two and three, you can do it that, that way. So I, I generally don't do that anymore, but I have in the past. Um, and then you can also choose uh, the, your margin width. So again, this is in, I think, Picas or something, but you can always change it change it to inches. Um, I think a good rule of thumb for like a, an 11 by 17 is to have at least a half inch uh, margin all around the border. Uh, but generally I try to do a little bit more if I can. Um, so just a little crash course on the controls. Um, I, so I always keep my rulers on. When you open InDesign, if you turn the rulers on, you'll see that there's a ruler and you can, and you just click on it and you drag it down and that creates a line for your grid. So that's what I always do. Uh, it's kind of hard to say it without showing you guys, but um, but I really recommend doing that just so you can have a grid to line everything up in. Um, when you import like a picture or something into InDesign, um, I'm not sure if you can really see the bottom two pictures of the bicycle, but if you click on the box once, a blue uh, outline will appear around it. And that allows you to edit the image frame, like either move it around or to make it maybe less wide or more tall or whatever. Um, if you click it twice, then that's for the uh, actual image within the frame. So that's, uh, and a yellow box appears around that. That allows you to move the picture that you have within the frame of the image, in, in the frame of, uh, the blue box. Does that make any sense to you guys? I hope it does, but <laughs> I'll keep going. Um, so also when you, uh, when you put an image or whatever in uh, InDesign, you always need to save it to your hard drive first. Okay. So I know that sometimes um, like when I use Photoshop or something, if I want to take a picture off the internet, I just drag it directly from like Google images or whatever straight to Photoshop. You can't do that in InDesign. I don't really know why, but you just can't. Um, there's, there's a little box at the bottom of your InDesign format and there's a light on it. And if it's green, that means there are no errors. It means everything's good. If you have a um, image on InDesign and you don't have the photo show saved, it'll have red and that'll mean that you have an error and it means you can't 
save it. You can't turn it into a PDF or anything. So that's just one thing that you guys need to be aware of. Also, if you have text that's hidden, like say you create a text box and then you type in, um, if you type too much so that the type flows out of the text box, again, it'll have that red light. And that means you need to make your text, either your text box bigger, or your text smaller. And so that's just one thing to you know be aware of. Um, if you say, if you try to save it as a PDF and it won't let you, just check that, that box to see if it's red or green and see you know where the error is and uh, what you need to do to fix it. Um, so that now that that's out of the way, uh, you know we can look at more of like the theme, the ideation that you go through with your client. So is it a real corporation or imaginary? Limar, the company we're doing is obviously real, but you know sometimes you'll get a school product or a school project and it's for like a fictitious client. Um, so just take those into account. You have to uh, take into account, you know, what's, what are their values? With Limar, I kind of think it's like sportiness, high technology, uh, classic design. And then what is their graphic design like? So like colors, fonts, logos, et cetera. So Smith wanted me to show you a little bit about um, my process for our first project, which is the wheel. So taking that into account, so who is the client I designed it for? So it was Audi. What are their values? Um, you know, luxury design, sportiness, German engineering, their graphic design, uh, their logo, their colors, and their font, which, um, you know, sometimes if you're looking at a corporation, it's hard to, like, you can type in, like, oh, what kind of font does so-and-so so use? But, you know, it doesn't always show that. So what I tend to do, I all go to their website, find, you know, is it a serif font? Is it a sans serif font? You know, what does it look like? And then from the list of the InDesign fonts, I'll choose one that kind of looks similar. Um, you can choose like the width and the height of the font. So, you know, even if it's not a perfect match, I try to find something that looks, you know, close enough that when you're presenting it, it could look like an actual presentation, you know, made by Audi. And I think that, you know, I think di different people have different ideas on it, but I always try to make it seem like, um, you know, if it's, a, if it's a competition to see who has the best wheel, if Audi's looking at my presentation and they think to themselves like, oh, this already like fits in with our design language, our, um, you know, our culture, et cetera. Um, if you can make that happen, I think that that might give you a leg up. And then for your presentation theme, so is it like a technical presentation or more artistic? So like I just got a job at an engineering firm. And so for that, you know, I think I look a lot more like was it uh, Joe's presentation that had like the, um, the aerodynamics of the helmet and just very technical. I think, you know, I'd do something like that. Whereas if I was for a more uh, making a more like creative project, it could my presentation could look a little bit more artistic. Um, what feeling do you get from your product? Um, so I know like some people had uh, for their helmet, they had like a very vintage style with like Italian uh, just design, uh, like clothing accessory inspired. So like I was thinking like, what could their presentation look like? So I, you know, I might take inspiration from like maybe an old Italian movie poster or something. Uh, those kind of pale pastel colors, this, you know, font, a more like romantic kind of style. Whereas if I had something like Joe's um, product, I take inspiration from, this is a company that built a bobsled for the U.S. Olympic team. And it's very, um, you know, just sort of matter of fact against a white background, just, you know, calling out, you know, what is important. Uh, what I like to do, which... Um, I know that like books and magazines are sort of becoming obsolete in the age of the internet, but I always think it's a good idea to like, maybe go to a bookstore or something and look in like their magazine section, even if you just don't buy anything to um, like take like a high quality magazine and look at the pages, look at the spread, um, take inspiration from that. Um, this is a book on like vintage bicycles. So maybe you look at like the colors and stuff they used to use if you know that was your theme for that and uh, try to translate it to your pages. 
so for example, for my, um, for my Audi wheel, um, like I said, Audi is all about like technology um, and looking forward, but it was also kind of a retro designed wheel. So I was seeing like how to marry those two ideas. Um, so I'm not, so I take a lot of inspiration from music and there's an old U2 album that um, I really took inspiration, like just like the graphic design of that, that I tried to, um, that I tried to marry to my graphics here on my presentation. Um, part of the reason was like that, that I'm not sure if anyone remembers here, but like that old like rainbow colored um, TV static. I, I don't know, it, to me it's like that vintage look, but also like a vintage idea of like, looking forward into the future. So I just overlaid that in Photoshop on my actual graphics itself. And, um, and yeah, um, and just this bottom image right here is like another interpretation of that. I think I took inspiration from, uh, I think it's like the end credits of a Jason Bourne movie where they have like all those lines going in different directions. So like that sort of color scheme and that kind of grid layout I took inspiration from. So Mark, go back to that, would you? So what, what are we seeing? Because I, I definitely see behind the wheel this, and, and I remember seeing at the time, it was, I think everybody loved it. So I, I definitely see the 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 TV, the, the color, the vertical and the horizontal stripes in there. Are the other ones in there too, or is it just? The bottom ones? Are you talking about these bottom ones? Yeah, well, so I see the one on the right. Yeah, no, this one isn't in there, it's but just I, inspiration. Just, I, okay. I just took inspiration. But I certainly see the one on the right. Mm -hmm. And then you also change the font here. It's like uh, vibrating. I changed the font, what, here? Yeah. Is that no. intentional or is that just a low res? That, oh, okay. So I also, I took um, from the internet, I found a PNG of, one of Audi's taglines, which is Vorsprung Deutsch Technik, which I hope no one speaks German here because I sure don't. And, but um, I believe that means uh, forward through technology or something, which kind of goes to, back to like my theme of my layout and whatnot. Um, but what I did with that was I think I overlaid it like three times and I didn't turn the- uh, In Photoshop or in design? In, in, in Photoshop. So, so you, you couldn't really do this in Illustrator or excuse me, in InDesign. I mean, you technically could, but it's not really meant for the, like this creative process. It's more to like create a grid. And then in Photoshop, I kind of determine like what goes in that grid and I just place it there in InDesign. Cool. So, um, so yeah, so I just, I just copied that the PNG of like their tagline three times and I overlaid them and but with like a tiny little offset. So it looks a little bit blurry. I don't know, that was just sort of going back to like the look I wanted, but um, you know, you might not want to do that. So for the presentation rules, just, I, you know, rules are always made to be broken, but you know, these are just a few that I always try to stick to. Uh, stay away from borders. I think that's a good one. You, you, you don't want, you know, your picture or whatever running off the page. I mean, you might want that as an intentional look, but for an absolute beginner, I think that it's best to, uh, you know, keep everything within the lines. Um, find a layout that works on multiple pages. So, you know, maybe you'll have one page where you think like, oh, I if I place like this picture here and like the text down here, like it all looks good that way. But then when you go to another page, just for one reason or another, it might not, look the same and it might not look right and so you don't want you don't want every single page in your presentation to look completely different from one another you want a sort of theme running through your grid um you want to keep the weight evenly spread across so you know you don't want if you have if this is your grid you don't want to have your picture here all your text here and then another picture here and then everything else on the other side blank you guys know what i mean um, you want it, you know, to keep your eye. I don't want, you, you shouldn't keep the eyes of the viewer busy, but it should all sort of look, um, you know, compatible with, uh, itself. Um, thinking rule of thirds, I'm not really a photographer 
and I don't know if anyone here is, but I know this rule is that, you know, when in doubt, just make a three by three grid. I know that's really popular with photography and that's kind of like the natural uh, state that your eye always likes to look in. So like if you take this picture right here of the dog, it goes like two boxes up and one box over and everything sort of evenly spaced across the grid. And so, um, you know, that might not be a bad idea if you are a beginner uh, to just stick with a really basic look like that and, um, and go from there. Um, and finally, you spill check. So in design, much like uh, Adobe Photoshop, uh, you can type whatever you want in there, but it won't spill check for you. So what I always do is I'll create a text box, have like some, you know, random sentencing that determines like how big my text box, text box has to be, but then I'll type my, uh, what I'm actually going to say up in word to make sure that everything's, you know, clear and concise and that makes sense. And there are no like red squiggly lines. And then I'll copy and paste it. Um, because, you know, you could have the best, you could have the best product in the world, but you know, if you, if you have spelling errors everywhere, the people looking at you are going to be like, yo, like this guy doesn't know how to spell. Like, why would I choose this product? So, um, so I so, can't tell you guys how many times that happens yeah. in, in presentations for me that my students do for Nissan or every project, every project I think people have submitted, there has been really simple typos. And the, as Mark says, the problem with that is it just makes you look like you haven't, you know, you, you want to make them think that you have designed this to every detail, like you've left nothing out. And when you have like an egregious spelling error, it just, people just don't take you as seriously. Yeah. So I'd also, I will admit that I just designed this, be, this presentation before class. So you might see some spelling errors here, but at the end of the day, I don't really care, you know, what you guys think of my spelling, but I care what Lee Mar thinks of my spelling. So you know, I'll be sure to change that before um, I do my presentation. And if you look at the example of my grid, so for my real project, so Audi has this logo, uh, you can see on the bottom, the RS, it has this sort of parallelogram running through it. And so I took inspiration from that also partially for my presentation. And um, I made sure that the angle of my pictures and whatnot were the same angle as this logo. And also uh, just going back to my first or my prior slide, when I was saying, you know, just create a text box, create, you know, how big you want it, how, um, how what the wording is gonna look like, like uh, what, like how uh, the space between the lines and like what typeface and whatnot. And then, you know, just, you know, copy and paste random things or I do that I just can, easily copy and paste that I don't need to worry about like, oh, like, um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not like an advertiser or anything. Like, I don't want to, um, like, you can worry about like what it's actually going to say at a later point. But when I was creating this example, I was like, okay, I want my, um, I want this text to go like this far down, have this, uh, this size type, et cetera, et cetera. And then after the fact, I can go back with what I actually want to say. And, you know, sometimes you kind of have to fudge a little bit like, okay, what I actually have to say is it only goes like three or four lines down, but it looks better if it goes six whole lines down. So, you know, just think of something to say and then put it in there at a later date. And then you also have like, so uh, image should be going in both red boxes, but again, you know, just have being able to uh, translate your grid from one side to the other. It's like, at, if I'm, if I was creating this, it's like, okay, well, you know, my image is going to be whatever, but I want to create a grid that works on multiple slides. So we can worry about like the exact images at a later date. And then finally, so, you know, once you actually have what you're going to say, and once you put your images in, uh, you know, you're, you're golden from there. So uh, yeah, that's what I have, Smith. I hope you guys uh, have some understanding of what I was trying to get across. And I hope that that's what you wanted me to show, Smith. But um, Yeah, so um, so Mark, I think it's it's it really helps me and, and probably the rest of the class understand how you created such a visually exciting 
um, regardless of the product. So let's just go back, if you don't mind, let's go back a, a, a slide if we could. Uh, yeah. So just here, I, I would say to everybody, you know, I think what, what I like about what Mark did is thinking about who the client is, who he's presenting to. And in this case, he's doing an Audi wheel, taking their logo. And it's not like blatant where, you know, he's ripping off the logo and everybody looks at it and says, well, that's Audi's logo. He's just taking the, the, the elements of it. And so what, what he said, obviously the color, this angle, uh, he has the same angle, um, you know, a, a, in terms of, of the layout, right? So, and then he's, he's incorporating, go back one slide earlier, right? So he's incorporating, he's got this kind of rule of thirds. And, and the other thing, go back down to, to the slide. The other thing that he's doing, uh, and we kind of talked about it, if you remember in the intro class, we call this justification. So if you look at the, um, the, the um, let's see, Mark, I'm gonna see if I can uh, record, request, requesting, um, access so I can move my mouse on yours. Yeah. Um, so if, if you can see is, Mark, I, I don't know what, what we're doing here, but um, let me, maybe I can do it in Canvas. I'm not sure who's we're gonna see here. So um, bear with me everybody real quick. Um, so what I was going to say was, uh, where's my little drawing? I don't see my little drawing. Um, just that the, if you look at the font here, the way that it, it, it lines up to the red of this, this rectangular box, it's everything's justified. Even the, the design uh, configuration on the top, uh, it, 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 it comes out like everything is, is laid out, right? Everything is justified. Meaning that if you go in the very top left of that red box and go down, um, it's also happening. Um, oh, I can't do it because let's see, annotate. Um, so let's see if this will work, Mark. Are you seeing my line? Yeah. Okay, just, right, obviously we see that, right? But we're just making a note of this. And so even uh, the way that this lines up, these all, it may sound pretty, seem pretty obvious, but you know, when you're laying things out, right? Like these are all justified. It's all justified where this line visually connects to this line, right? And so, um, you know, he's, he's following these rules that you might not be aware of. And, and then the, 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 the visualization, the weight of this and the weight of here, and, and then he's got the way to hear of the object and the way to the text, right? So there's just a lot going on visually uh, to keep it balanced. And I can't tell you, and I think you all are aware of this, especially when you look at like Mark's presentation, but um, you know, at this point, his project um, has to support it, but he's done a lot. So when he gets to his final layout, go to the last page, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, he's got, a, he's got, um, you know, I think some of you struggled in that your image were, were either really small or they just, all there was, was the image that it has, um, it supports the narrative, right, Mark? Is, is that what you, you, I'd say here? Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah. And so then he's got that background in Photoshop. That, so it's visually, it's not just a gray, like, you know, right. It's tempting just to have that gray shape but then he's got that color bleeding through from that tv so there's a lot going on visually engaging and so um as he said i i i i, I get what he did so you know the, the the we call it copy right he just added copy so it visually worked right and that's okay right because he needed to fill this area on the right here so it it uh that there was enough copy right mark yeah Right, so it just balanced out. So, anyway, I think. Um, do you guys have any um, have any questions? Um, let me just do one thing. So, I'm going to send you a little note here, Mark. Um, can you just open up? Do you have InDesign open? Uh, can yeah. you just open you a very? Quick, can you minimize this and just open up InDesign? Yeah. And we don't. I don't need a whole demo, but I just if you could just open up InDesign. And okay. we can just see what 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 it looks like before we we uh, have Nick take over. Wait. 
All uh, right. So what what, what is what did everybody think of that? So just open up in design and share it with the class just so we can see what it looks like when you open it. Just All open right. up a new document, just kind of like you talked about. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, so um, file. So can you guys all see this? Yep. yep. All right, so yeah, you go to file, new document. Uh, I don't even really know what book does or libraries. I just avoid it. Um, and then it might take a minute. It's okay. Because I don't, I've never really used InDesign. Uh -huh. uh, it reminds me of PageMaker. I use um, Illustrator. Okay, so there you go. So you, you so got yeah, this. So if you have um, like prior. Okay. So you go to settings. so we go to print, right? So on the left, we probably go to print. Uh, go up, go up, go up. Just do me a favor. Your mouse go keep going oh, up, up, print. right there. Click print. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and there's so, tabloid right there on the left. Yeah. So, right. well, so just can click, I just click. say like th these are all in picas, which I don't really know what that is. So change it, units to inches. Click, click on that. Inches, yeah. That's kind of what I always do. Yeah, but click on the tabloid one. Okay. And then uh, on the right, then you go um, to the horizontal orientation. Yeah. Right. And, and click inches again. I'm sorry. It, it when you went to tabloid. Yeah. Click there and make that inches. Uh, what you're going to save it as? How many pages you want? So. If so you want then yeah. So then you know. Uh, is it a maximum of six pages? Yeah. So you probably do six. You could always eliminate a page, right? Mark, yeah, you, you can eliminate. A yeah, page. you can. You can also when you're in the middle of a presentation, you can always add pages. You can al yeah. always eliminate pages. And I will also say, um, just because I didn't really bring it up here, but so there's a 17 by 11 format, which is obviously what we're in, like hot dog style or whatever you call it. Um, but if you wanted to, if you wanted to like actually make it a book, what you would do is what's half of 17 is. Okay, let's not do that. Well, let's just keep okay. it simple for now, okay? I appreciate that though, okay? Yeah, Unless and then can't... also you can always choose like the margin size, so like a half inch for this, or you could always bump it up to like uh, three quarters of an inch or whatever. So but the margins are really when you print though, right? I mean, do you-, uh, do you... No, so, well, I guess they are, but what I always use that for is I kind of consider that to be my border. So it did, so there's no bleeding over there? Okay. Yeah. All right, so, so go create. So create. Just so everybody then, can see. Yeah, could I- let me just go back to my InDesign template, if that's all right. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to see, so like, can you guys see how it says no errors down here? You guys see that, right? Uh, I don't, uh, where? At the very bottom, there's a little- Oh, yeah, 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 spot. okay. Okay. <clears throat> but if I click on this, say I want to make my text box smaller, I go like this, and some of my text cuts off, there becomes an error. I see. Means, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then just to address uh, Mark's, uh, he was commenting on why it doesn't, it, it doesn't embed, it's linked to the image. So it doesn't embed them inside. Otherwise you'd have huge files, but you have to save whatever image that you're going to place in here. You don't delete it. You have to usually keep it in the same folder. Yeah. Right. And also I'll say that I, I've made the mistake personally before <laughs> of I had a presentation due and I, uh, you know, I had all my images in there and I pre and I gave my presentation. And then at a later day, I wanted to clean out my computer. So I deleted some of the images that I used for my presentation. And then when I went to make changes to my presentation for like my portfolio, I wasn't able to because the images had been deleted from my file. So, you know, I, I, I try to save everything you use in there until you know that you're, there's absolutely no way that I'm gonna ever uh, present this anymore. And then also Smith, can I uh, show them how I got that angle for, um, for uh, Go ahead. my slideshow? So just to sh show you guys quick one more time, I'll use, okay, I'll use like this right here. So again, you, you click this, you have the little blue box and you can make it um, like thinner or thicker, or you can move it around. But um, but that doesn't actually like change like the format of the actual image itself, just like the image border. So if you want to change like if you want to make this actual image bigger, but within the same box, 
you click it twice, you see how there's like this golden line around it. And that's when you know that you can actually make it bigger, but it stays within the same frame. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. And then, so if you want to change like the actual shape of this box, like you don't like a box is boring or whatever, I believe you click on this white arrow here. Uh, you First you click on the box, then I think you click the white arrow and then you're able. Mark, you, you killed it or you okay. crushed it. So uh, we could obviously spend a lot of time on this. Um, but I, I think what I wanted everybody to, to, to get a sense of is, is kind of the layout that you should be thinking of. It's, it's, it's really, I would say it's, it's, I don't want to say it's half your presentation because obviously, you know, they're going to be looking at your, your fusion model, but it's a huge component because if, if your, your layout doesn't support the design, it just, it just doesn't have that, uh, you know, uh, that what you need to really knock it out of the park okay so we're going to tr uh, transition here mark if that's okay yeah uh, nick is going to do my... very good job so why don't you email that to me and i'll oh. i'll put that in the canvas under today's um uh activity so we'll have that available to you if you want to look at mark's presentation um i suspect some of that he lifted from his a uh, class at long beach or something because i thought it was very professional so maybe you could teach a class one day mark at dvc a professional guy all right. right. So, Nick, do you want to go ahead and, and, and do a little uh, Photoshop? Absolutely. Um, there's so much there's so much more than Photoshop I want to show. It's all uh, good. Knock yourself out. We've got right. about 20 minutes. All right. That let's hope that's enough. All right. We'll blast through it. We'll go to sharing screen. Am I uh, is my screen visible? You're, you're golden. All right. So here we are. We've opened Photoshop. Uh, and I'm just gonna open. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna like stylize a photo real quick. We're gonna start off with uh, this gravel racing thing, image. Give it a second to open because it is being slow apparently today. It's all good. It's gonna be slow for everybody. There we go. All right, so over on the left side, just like uh, in design, you have all the tools. I, I know my screens, uh, the buttons are a lot smaller than on Mark's, so I'm hoping you can see it. Yep. Um, you have all our tools. You've got move tool, a rectangular marquee. It just allows you to select something, move it, select new things, etc. cetera. Uh, magic wand allows you to fix uh, certain things. Uh, it's better on different kinds of photos. You'll learn to figure that out. Got frame tools, eyedropper, healing brush, and clone stamp. Clone stamp's fairly important, as is br the brush. Um, all right, so we're gonna just stylize this photo a little bit. So we're gonna go file. Uh, let's see where's insert. I usually I usually just drag and drop, honestly. So I want to style it uh, kind of with this. I, ha I haven't done this uh, specific thing before. So what I did was all I all I did was I just dragged and dropped it in, and I'm holding Shift while I uh, rotate it, just so that it doesn't get all these like very specific, uh, you know, 90.1 degrees. It it'll just stick to the on the 15 degree. Then we can increase it. Holding shift will keep it proportional. Holding alt will uh, increase it from all sizes. So for now, we can just cover that. Uh, shoot. If you go to window on the top, you should be able to hit your layers. Yeah, no, my layers are down here. I don't know why it messed everything up. Uh, whatever. There we go. There we go. We'll just we'll just pretend like it's been working this whole time. Uh, I I was trying to make the uh, UI a little bit bigger. So what we can do here is over here just to stylize it a little bit. We can switch the color mode from normal to some of these other kinds. 
there's uh the oh, the fancy and yeah. that's exactly what i did for my uh no my you team. didn't mark it, it i can you center the picture you you're working on nick you can't see what it do you mean name. no i can see I it see the... oh okay maybe it's my computer it might be yours i see it perfectly it's... oh i see a little bit of it but i get the gist okay thanks i think it's your screen okay yeah, this is what i assumed you did is everybody um, else seeing this? This let me ask before, so we're not. Can everybody see the? I got uh, is it it, now. You got it. Okay. I can see it. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. I can see it. Is this helping everybody? Yes. Okay. Right. You can play around with whichever ones of these you want. Some of them will do all funny things. Some of them will create like that. You probably don't want that. Probably want darken or multiply. Uh, screen is normally the one if you want to make it lighter. Multiply is normally the one if you want to make it darker. So for everybody, so, th you know, you wouldn't do this with your helmet, obviously, but you would do this with images or your layout, being able to manipulate, right? So, so I think this is really great. And um, we can reduce the opacity over here on the right side on the layers panel, just so that it doesn't overwhelm it. Um, in addition, over here, we've got crop tools. So maybe you don't want the whole image. Just want a little bit of it. You just want that. Oh. The uh, zoom is covering up half my full bar up top. Uh, so we have we have that. And you know maybe, maybe that's what you want. But we can do maybe a, a different type of stylization. So we are going to. And then we, what, what format would you save this in to take it into InDesign or Illustrator? Um, so the great thing about InDesign is that it can pretty much take anything. Um, personally, I'm par partial to exporting it as a PNG so because uh, PNG is going to be lossless. Uh, and if your image has any transparency, then it'll keep the transparency. I, so don't do JPEGs, right? Because JPEGs... Yeah get rid of everything. JPEGs do get rid of everything. PNGs are uh, great format. PNGs are wonderful. So I'm actually going to do a, another one, which is going to be a, a little bit different. So I want to make a cutout of this person because say I want to have this portrait of my, of, you know, this is the, my ideal client. And I just want their face in my, uh, in my presentation. So there's a there's a couple ways to do it. We can take this uh, magic wand, quick selection, object selection. I'm partial towards uh, what is this? Uh, quick selection because you can kind of drag without having too many issues. And you, you can see here, I got pretty much all of him right. And I can come in here and hold the alt key or up here you use the subtract key to try and get it a little bit neater so here we have uh we have almost a, a really good cut so one thing we can do is i just i'm just turning the background later into a regular later so we can edit it down here we can make a, a clipping a layer mask so I do that. All right, we want actually want to invert that. So now we just have an image of just his face, pretty much. You can you can go in. Nick, show, show us how you did that in that invert map real quick again, because oh. like we saw you, you you did great. So so you use a magic wand. You selected that gray area, and then you went down and you you added. I, an... I clicked this button down here. It's really hard to see. I see it. Uh, it's you add a, a clipping mask. And then I, I selected the wrong thing, but that's really easy because with the clipping mask selected in properties, you can just click invert and it'll turn, uh, it'll invert it. Where so was the invert? Up, right above it? Okay. Right. Oh. Um, I don't, I, I don't remember if this is exactly how regular Photoshop is laid out because I didn't plan on doing this specifically, but it, it, it'll be in properties. So I suppose I should uh, talk about what a clipping mask is. In Photoshop, it's just a black and white image that shows what and how much of uh, 
the image that it's attached to is going to show. And it's not just black and white. You can also do grays. So let's say I want to paint in a little bit of a, I don't know, a little bit of gray around here. This is just an example. See how that's just gray, black, and black, white, and this is gray. It'll show up on this image as uh, not, not quite, white means uh, the background image will show through and black means it won't. The gray means a little bit of it will. Which class did you learn this in? Uh, this is the Grant Adams one. 135? Yes. So we're, we're actually just going to get rid of those because we don't care about that. And to be able to physically see it, the clipping mask is going to hold Alt and click it. Uh, if you just want to be able to directly edit it for some reason. Uh, there's reasons why. Um, yeah. The other way to do it would be to take this eraser tool and you can just erase this. The only issue with this method is that it actually deletes the pixels that were underneath it. There's no way to restore it. Uh, and the good thing about a clipping mask is you can go here and, oh, you want his hair a little bit outside, you can select the clipping mask and paint on what, what's actually missing. And that's, that's one of the big skills in Photoshop, learning how to use the clipping mask and how to use it effectively. So now let's say we want to stylize this. For example, your, um, uh, I, I, I found a really good image that I wanted to show off. For this, let's say your design is very polka dotty or something. Uh, we can, if you find an image like this one, again, I'm using uh, Shift and Alt to make it bigger. And we can just click yes there. And again, what we can do is we can change it to darken. That looks a little bit strange, but maybe uh, just, um, where's overlay? Just like an overlay of some kind. And, but the issue again, there's uh, the stylization outside of where he is. So we can hold alt on the clipping mask that we made before for the guy, let's call, let's call him Jeff. For Jeff, you can hold Alt and drag it, which will give us the same clip. It'll just copy the same clipping mask for the above one. So say if you had a very hexagonal, polka dotty, stylized helmet, you could make your portrait stylized or make the whole presentation stylized with this. We can just like drop the opacity Do you down. want to show that drawing that you, you the really cool one you, 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 you did for the presentation? Sure. Just to show um, kind of the application that he did it in. Yeah, um, I used something called, uh, ba, 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 ba. I used uh, in, uh, something called Envato Elements that so, yeah. is very much, I'm, I'm glad I taught you how to use the overlay because that's going to be very useful. Uh, so I'll actually tab to it. Um, it's on something called Envato Elements. Uh, it's the base of what I did. You can um, download it. And it's a, a series of just in Photoshop things that you can make. Uh, and Envato has a bunch of really cool things. These are just a few of the things that I've personally really liked. Uh, I don't uh, have all of them. And they're just like things that maybe you can get inspired by as well. For example, I was actually inspired by this sketch. So I wanted to do something that would help uh, make the sketch. So for this in particular, what you're going to want to do is you're going to make a new layer, layer one above the background, just by going layer, new layer. And you're just going to paint over uh, 
who the the person or whatever you want to be uh, turned into a uh, in, into a sketch. So we uh, actually this it would be smarter. It would be smarter to just select everything that isn't him. And you can see Photoshop does a pretty decent job of that. It's not perfect all the time, but it got it got most of it. Oh. So we'll, we're just gonna add little little bits here and there. It's not. Luckily, we're trying to make a sketch, so it's not extremely important. And then from here, we can, uh, since I selected everything outside, we're going to go to select inverse. So now it's only him that's selected, as well as some stuff over, over here, but we don't need to worry about that. And we can just on on the new layer, don't forget to switch to the new layer when you paint in. Just paint him in with a color. And then what we can do is, so like that, if, you, if, if you're doing it for real, obviously you'll do a better job of doing this. Uh, you can do it more manually with a lasso or a polygonal lasso tool up here. But then we're going to um, do an action. Did you did you preload that? This is preloaded, yeah. Okay. Are there any default ones that we could look at? Uh, there's some default ones, yeah. Uh, Whatever you uh, we'll, want to do is fine. Well, uh, I'm not used to doing them. Here, we'll do a, a wood a wood frame. So we'll just select the the wood frame and click play, and it's just gonna start doing things. Oh, that's useful. It should start doing things. I don't know, is chat telling me I'm doing something wrong? I might be doing something wrong. I'm not as. I, I usually just click OK for all of these. Because Because the, the the people who made this are gonna know what they were doing. All right, that did not work. I'm it's sorry. Okay. You, I, you can use your own one. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. You're doing great. All right, we're going to. Uh, if there's a layer that you don't like. You can down here at the bottom, you can just delete them. So now we're back to here. And we're going to do this and we're going to stand set, you know, put our hands behind our head uh, and sit back as we watch a whole bunch of layers be start being created over here. Uh, and this should just start doing it. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. It's very cool. And this one adds a whole bunch of stuff that I don't like. So uh, the ones I've made are slightly different from these ones. Hmm. Uh, but as you can see here, it's it's starting to create the sketch and it'll continue doing that. And then you can always turn the layer off you don't like, right? Exactly. That's very you, cool. Very cool. Is that program free? Um, Envato Elements is uh, 
uh, it's something you have to pay for. Okay. Um, but what you get with it is I was, I was actually going to do another small thing. Well, while Photoshop's doing this, we can actually skip over to Chrome. So in Chrome, uh, any web browser, uh, there's a whole bunch of websites you can use to get really high quality photos. Uh, so you don't have to just have your renders. You know, you want, oh, perfect. Sorry, uh, I'll continue this real fast. If you want a really high quality photo for, say, the portrait of your person, or I believe somebody had really nice photos of Italy, uh, and those really help create the atmosphere of the presentation. Uh, but you don't want to be using copyrighted material because that you probably have to pay for, and that's probably real expensive. So, my favorite one is Unsplash, and you can. Uh, Unsplash has really high quality photos, ridiculously good high quality photos, and all of it is under the Unsplash license, which is uh, you don't even need to credit the person who took the photo. So it's really good for us students. Another one is Pixabay, uh, which is very similar. And another one is Pexels, which again is also very similar. And Nick, th those are the ones that when you download, they you can push play and it and it creates. Uh, what was that? Oh, um, the uh, right now I'm just talking about high just uh, high high images. just stock photographs. Okay, stock photos because I'm going to get to Envato in just a second. Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. Uh, and yeah, like I can download this one, and it'll say uh, say thanks, but you don't need to if you don't want to. It's just nice if you do. Um, so Envato is one of the ones that I use. It's a paid subscription for students. I think it's maybe $10 a month, which is less than um, uh, Adobe. Uh, but you can go to stock video, sound effects, it has all of these things, it even has presentation templates, which uh, don't don't use these, make your own. Uh, but photos, fonts, add-ons, web templates, has all kinds of things. And I, I'm i not paid by them, but I think they're really good for what they are. So add-ons, we uh, they also have these add-ons for Photoshop. As you can see, you can do all kinds of things with it. Uh, and one of uh, the one I have is from here. It's uh, the Da Vinci sketch. If you want to steal that, uh, I have a whole bunch of other ones that I could uh, use as well. Um, anyways, we're done with that. We can go up here. So how'd you import it in? You downloaded it? I downloaded it and then uh, mine came with a, an instruction PDF okay. to do it. I don't fully remember exactly how to. Okay. Um, but here we've, we've, we have this and the whole thing, you can just turn it off if you want. Uh, and every little thing, like you so say, you don't like the paper, you can turn it off. Uh, there's different colors. Uh, say for example, you don't want any of those kinds of things and you just want this outline, you can do that, which could be a, a cool if you have something like that and now it's all like stylized, like he's a sketch popping out of the paper or something like that. Anyways, um, that's how you would stylize using Da Vinci or one of the other ones from Envato. Um, that's uh, that, the clipping mask uh, and cutting things out are some of the very important things. So real fast, we'll, we'll take this image and this is why converting it to a PDF is really important or saving as a PDF. We'll just save it real quick and I'll just show you uh, in InDesign 
why it's important. And th this is just uh, my own like testing thing. Uh, so in in design, uh, obviously you've, you guys have all seen this before. Uh, Pikas, I know uh, Mark um, didn't say, but uh, Pikas are one sixth of an inch in each point in a pica, there, or rather there are 12 points in a pica. And if you know about screen resolution or in printing resolution, it's usually 72 uh, picks or dots per inch. And six times 12 makes it to exactly um, uh, 72. So uh, PICAS just makes it easy to know uh, vaguely how many uh, points are going to be printed out. And you can do things uh, with that. So 72 is also a really nicely divisible number. So I'm just going to create a new document real fast. And we are going to file place uh, desktop. I'm going to go to portrait two. You can uh, press and hold alt with the uh, scroll wheel <laughs> to uh, make uh, to zoom in and out. Uh, and to make it smaller, again with Photoshop, alt just does the same transformation or originating from the middle. Shift will make it scale proportionally. This is new to uh, InDesign. If you hold control, uh, here, I'll just show you without. It, you change the frame, but it doesn't change the picture underneath. So if you hold control, uh, control, alt, shift, it'll uh, do that. So this, this is going to be useful, for example, uh, it's, it's really hard to make this kind of clipping mask outside of Photoshop. And is really useful if you want to put something, say, behind the, uh, the person. Obviously, this is in front. So if you want to put something behind, right click, arrange, send backwards or send to back. And now we can just adjust it. And now it's like his portrait is um, popping out of. Oh, so this this is another way you might want to make use the alt key. You want to transform both sides by the same amount. So now it's almost like he's um, popping out from behind the background, which is mildly cool very mildly. Um, so that's one thing you could do. It's very nice to do that. Um, I remember I was going to do some other things in uh, in here in InDesign, but I think most of those were covered. Uh, obviously. Why don't, you, why don't you show how to make the text uh, so it's not um, vertical where it was flowing like that? I think Mark did something okay. similar where the text yeah. wraps around or is curved. So I I believe we can do that with this guy as well. It's a good call. So uh, again, you don't know what to put in here. You can do type, fill with placeholder text, and it'll fill it with placeholder text. Uh, arrange, send to back, because we want our guy in the front. So we'll go to uh, type. We don't want to go uh, that. God, I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember how to do this. Uh, we'll go object paths uh, clipping path options. So um, we've we've made our uh, uh, transparent image already. So we'll go object clipping path clipping path options. And we'll do alpha channel since we already have our um, 
alpha channel. Alpha channel is just transparency. Since we already have transparency, uh, we've already done all the hard work. Otherwise, you would have to go in, detect edges, and that would, you can see right there, it's, it's not doing the right thing already. So we'll do that. So remember, the alpha channel is only if you save that image as a, as a PNG file. Yes. Uh, and detect edges does work quite well. If the background of the image is uh, white or a solid color, very different from the previous one. Uh, that's very, uh, rather, very different from the actual subject of the image. So I, I um, convert clipping path to frame. Perfect. And we are going to select this. this is, I, have to, I have to move it down just so you, we can uh, see. So over here, we, we have the image selected. Over here, we see uh, the text wrap options. So you can do wrap around bounding box, which we don't really want. We want it to be uh, around the subject. I, I, what's, what's it doing? There we go. Um, this one down here, wrap around object shape allows us to move this guy wherever we want in the text. Oh, make sure we have the right tool selected. We can move this guy around and the text should, um, yeah, it transforms around him. You can add the uh, add spaces right up here. You can if you want a little yes. farther away from him. I think it's right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, I, I had it set to yeah. absolutely nothing. So Nick, that's awesome. I think you've done a great job. So I just, you know, for everybody, you know, we, uh, again, we do have a class, uh, and if you take it, you want to, you really want to take Grant Adams' class. It's basically our portfolio class. He, he teaches everybody how to make portfolios, very helpful, and to do, you know, really nice portfolios. So um, it's combined with architects and such. So, uh, you know, but uh, for, for what we're doing today, um, I think, you know, we're just kind of showing you some tricks that might help your presentation. So Nick, uh, Mark, excellent job, you guys. Everybody, thank them, please. We're going to all have to pay them with pizza and soda or something. Um, Joe's going to have to actually give them money, uh, but everybody else, you can just buy them treats. Okay, so I'm going to take over this. So uh, Nick, are you good? Uh, yeah. It, uh, could I do like one more small thing that might help? Do it. Yes, please. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. It's all, it's all good. It's all good. I or, think this is really good for everybody. Uh, so we're actually just going to get rid of this guy for now. Um, the other things are the type tool, like all, all of everything's been shown a little bit. Line tool is really nice because then you can make um, like uh, lines. And it's also nice because if you want, instead of doing it in, um, say you don't want to do it in Illustrator, uh, uh, yeah, Illustrator, you could create the lines uh, and with uh, text on them here. Obviously, go over here to uh, switch out the the font uh, if you want. That's one thing that's nice. The other thing is, if you're used to um, uh, Illustrator, you would know the pen tool, which makes it triumphant return here and you can, it, it's exactly the same. And we can go object paths, close path. And you can over here, uh, fill it with, we'll, we'll just do uh, black for now. And it works exactly the same way as Illustrator, but you can make all these nice shapes in here. 
uh, anyways, I that cool. that's pretty much it uh, for me. Uh, all the other tools should be fairly simple. Actually, wait, one last one, very last one. I promise. Uh, we'll we'll take this one that we've we made before, and we want we want to make it so that it fades into the background. So we want it to take up the whole space. Uh, it, let's find how it was. So we'll want to go into here, FX, transparency, and it, it just takes you into the whole, whole thing. Uh, you actually want either directional feather, which say uh, we want it to feather on the left side. We can just bump that up and it starts uh, to make it transparent over on that side. Just like that. And then it slowly uh, fades into white so it, you don't get the, the hard edges if you don't want them. Uh, but, in, but you can keep them if you do. You can always go in, click the select box to turn it on or off. And there's all kinds of other things that you can uh, add to it. Uh, and you can play around. It's really not too bad. You can add drop shadows, uh, anything like that. Cool. Uh, and I, th I think that's it for me. Yeah, you you know, between you and Mark, you could probably spend the next uh, 12 hours just doing this demo and, and have more to show us. But very cool. So hopefully that helps everybody. Um, so let me go ahead and take the screen over. Thank you very much, Nick. 